it may be it may be better to refrain from asking others because over time it leads to reliance on others for dua now in dua if you tell someone make dua for you and your intention is to benefit yourself in the one you asked then you're really encouraging righteousness and you may get reward for it if that's your intention you may get reward if you're gonna benefit him how do you benefit him you benefit him if you ask him to make dua you benefit him by making a ibadah dua is a ibadah when you tell him make dua for me you're encouraging him to do a ibadah we said dua is ibadah so you're basically encouraging him to make dua that's like pray the two sunnahs after dhuhr brother your reward will be for encouraging him to make ibadah that's how you benefit him if that's your intention to encourage him to make dua so the angels will make dua for him, you get you're encouraging righteousness if your intention is to get him to make dua so he can do ihsan to you or to another you get reward for it ihsan is righteousness Righteousness to a brother. You'll get reward for encouraging him to do ihsan to you or to someone else. So if I get another Muslim to make dua for me or another, then I will get possibly ajr for that, inshallah. If the intention when asking to make dua is to benefit himself and the one who he asked, you will get reward, inshallah, for that. If his intention is to only benefit himself personally it may be it may be better to refrain from asking others because over time it leads to reliance on others for dua directly or indirectly then one may become neg neglectful over his own dua and being persistent in it knowing someone else uh, may be making dua for him it may also, in this day and age, give some people an ego or a big head when they, people keep telling them, make dua for me, make dua for me. Ibn Rajab said, Umar ibn al-Khattab and other Sahaba in Tabi'een used to dislike someone asking them to make dua, saying, are we messengers? They understood it, that was a quality to be a messenger uh, and they didn't want to, you know, they, they, they were humble and they didn't want to taint their humility with Allah. Ibn Jarir narrated that when Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas went to Damascus, a man told him, ask Allah to forgive me. And you know, Sa'd was, Allah honored him with an answered dua. A man asked him when he went to visit, he said, uh, ask Allah to forgive me. So he said, may Allah forgive you. He told the first man, may Allah forgive you. Another man came in and said, ask Allah to forgive me, Sa'ad. Sa'ad said, may Allah not forgive you or him, meaning you and the one who asked me before you. Do I look like a messenger to you? He commented on this saying in, in lesson, and he, he said, when he seen it was an exceptional request to make dua, he answered. When people began to crowd, and he understood it differently, which is that people may think that he's at a higher level, than what he is, or a higher status, or that possibly he had foresight and knew that they may think in the future that he is at a higher status. He wanted to eliminate that. He wanted to eliminate that people assume that asking him for dua is also a sunnah. He didn't want to elevate, think that he's at a higher status. He didn't want them to think it's a sunnah. Ibn Jarir also narrated a similar story that a man asked Hudayfa radiallahu an to forgive him. A man asked Hudayfa to ask Allah to forgive him. Hudayfa said, may Allah not forgive you. Just like Sa'd's story. He probably didn't want people thinking that he's at a higher status than he is, as the scenarios that Shatabi rahimahullah mentioned. Or he didn't want to make it, a, he probably didn't want to make it a trend. Uh, Al-Khatib in his book at talkhis mentioned that when Ubaidillah ibn Abi Salih was ill, Tawus went to visit him. Ubaidillah ibn Abi Salih said, Oh Abu Abdurrahman, the kunya of uh, Tawus, 
Make dua for me. He said, make dua for yourself. Allah answers the distressed when they call. Tawus told them, make dua for yourself. What he means is, you may go ask someone who you think is better. Maybe he is. Allah, Allah knows best. But you have a quality that may give you a higher status for that dua to be accepted. You're in distress. The person you're asking to make dua for is not in distress over your matter. What did Allah say? The one who responds to the distress when he calls. He didn't say the one who goes to his friend, the one distressed who goes to his friends and asks his friend to make dua. He said the distressed himself when he calls. You have a quality. Uh, the other hadith where the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Bakr and Umar, إِنْ رَأَيْتُمَا أُوَيْسَنِ الْقَرْنِ فَاسْأَلَاهُ أَنْ يَدْعُوا لَكُمَا If you see Uwais al-Qarni, the Prophet told Abu Bakr and Umar, if you see Uwais al-Qarni, ask him to make dua for you. The hadith is authentic. That's a special circumstance. That's a special situation. Uh, and, and that's a special man whose dua is answered. And how do we know it's special? I just told you right now. The Sahaba, as you see in Hudayfa, in Sa'ad, in what Shatibi said that about a uh, Sahaba that they disliked it, they understood it to be special when they didn't ask each other to make dua for each other. They didn't ask that. So they understood it, we go by, that's what we say when we follow the Salaf, that's what we mean. In fact, had it been proper after the Prophet ﷺ said that about a waste, Umar would have turned to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhuma and he would have said to, the, to him, make dua for me, because Abu Bakr is better than Umar. He never did that. So it appears like this was an exceptional circumstance. And then uh, the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Bakr and Umar to ask Uwais for dua if they see him. The issue we mentioned is people making a trend and relying on others for dua. Uh, Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhuma, their iman and knowledge in making dua in their reliance on Allah in making dua, it's not something that you fear over. Unlike today, where people will begin to rely on others for making dua and neglect their own dua and their own persistence, which wasn't something that we would expect of Abu Bakr and Umar. So in summary, what I started off with is this dua. Uh, asking someone to make dua shirk? No, that's not shirk at all. Is it sinful? No. What's better? The summary opinion is that it's not a problem to ask another to make dua. In fact, you get rewarded at times. If your intention is to make dua to benefit the ummah or to benefit you and the person you're asking or to benefit that person himself, then you may get reward for it. If it's exceptional, other than that, if it's exceptional or random and you yourself are firm in your dua, you're firm, you're persistent in your dua and it's exceptional or random, you say make dua for me, you don't slack in your dua habits, you, uh, uh, you don't rely on others dua, then that's uh, permissible and okay. One of the simple, most uh, basic duties to your brothers and sisters is that we should all be making dua for each other behind our backs, each, all of us, without anyone telling us. You benefit yourself more than anyone because you have an angel telling you and you will get the same. Tell me this. If I make dua for myself, for example, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, uh, allow me to pass that exam. Is that better? Or may Allah give me Jannah? Whether it's this life or in the life after. Is that better? Or if I say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give Muhammad, Salih, Ra'id, a beneficial knowledge, or Jannah, or to pass the exam. Which one's better? Which one's going to be most likely answered? Me merely making dua for myself, me sinful me, or making dua for my brother, the angel telling me, Ameen, and you'll get the same. Also, before we go on to the next question, uh, many give charity and they say, make dua for me. You see that a lot. If you want what's better, again, what's better? And no, I said what's better, uh, not a matter of haram and halal and shirk. Is don't ask that because look at the verse. We feed you for the sake of Allah. We don't want no thanks, no reward, no type of reward, no type of reward. 
When Aisha radiallahu anha used to send someone with a charity, she would tell that messenger, she would tell that messenger, listen to them and see if they make dua. So I can make a dua equivalent to that back onto them and return that dua back onto them so I can get my full reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that some of the Salaf used to say, if you give a poor person and he says, Barakallahu alayk, say Barakallahu alayk back to him so that it will not constitute receiving anything in return for that charity that you got, that you gave and get your entire reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord hath said, Pray unto me, and I will hear your prayer.